wide receivers wanted. And I know that's the big thing everybody wants. <laughs> everybody wants it. I want it. You and I both want it. We, we, we've been dying for this for two years. Um, so rumors are starting to kind of swirl. We kind of alluded to it on Monday night when Hollywood Brown actually liked our tweet about get it. get We say get it done feature with the handshake emoji. He liked our tweet. Uh, with a picture of Mahomes in Hollywood throwing a pass. So, you know, alluding to that, since then, it's kind of gone, gone wild. He's gone on Twitch, uh, watching highlights of Patrick Mahomes with fans and his Twitch, his live Twitch thing. I uh, followed Patrick Mahomes on Instagram. So Hollywood Brown, and there's also some reports out there that there's mutual interest on both sides. Brett Beach was very interested in him coming out of the draft back in 2019. So there was interest there. And then you got Curtis Samuel, who JD loves. And then Josh Reynolds. So these are two guys that Nate Taylor has said, of the Athletics, Nate Taylor has said that uh, Curtis Samuel and Josh Reynolds, the Chiefs are interested in both those guys. So, J.D., I want to go through each guy with you. Let, okay. uh, let's, let's talk about the pros and cons of each one of these guys, uh, of how they would fit in this offense. All right. Be- before I go into those guys, I'm, I'm going to say this. I do believe the reason that we haven't signed any receiver thus far is because they knew guys were going to get released like a Hunter Renfro, like a Mike Williams, like o- o- Odell Beckham Jr. They st- you're starting to see guys getting released now. Okay. And so that opens up options for the chiefs. I think they knew this because it ain't like, Oh, well, how does look they're They're talking. Everywhere. These te- teams are talking all the time about doing deals about, hey, man, we, we, we're we going to let this guy go soon. What do you think? And so I think the Chiefs knew that. So they just didn't want to put themselves in a box just with these few guys. Okay. Same thing, Calvin Ridley. It's like he got paid. It's like he got paid. He did. And we, we knew he's going to, I knew he was going to get paid. Look, he, he holding out for a reason. And he knew it. So there's a lot of negotiation going on, you guys. Now, with that being said, uh, every guy's not a fit for every system. They're just not. They're not. But the th- those three guys that we're talking about, okay, okay, Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, Curtis Samuels, okay, and Josh Reynolds, three guys that we're talking about here. So I'll go, I'll go into, I'll do Hollywood Brown first. So Hollywood Brown to me is, he's a, he's a good receiver. He's a very good receiver. Very fast. Uh, had a great season up there in Baltimore where he had the thousand yards. Uh, was torching guys. Looked like he was going to be a star in the NFL. He really did. I mean, he, to me, I'm like, this guy's coming on. Antonio Brown's cousin. So you hopefully that, you know, the family history like that keeps going on. Like, okay, well. You, you know, maybe this thing happens. And he shows that. He shows all that ability, the, the speed, uh, getting out of breaks, the cuts, flying from guys. Um, this is something the Chiefs would have to have. Now, the pro for that is all those things. Take the top off the defense. Speedy guy, right? The cons of it is where his injury history is. Uh, he's a smaller statured guy. Okay. Uh, I don't know what the talks are between teams or what they're saying about him, what type of locker room guy he is. Like I said before, we, nobody really knows too much about him. Okay. As far as other than what they see on the field. And so sometimes injury history is, a, is, is absolutely a concern. Uh, especially where I seen like heel, we're talking about ankle and all those different things that he's had. Hamstring, but that but speedy guys are gonna have that. Hamstrings a guy you'll have that as 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 a speed guy. Oh yeah. Okay? Tyreek has it. I mean, that's just you're fast. You got fast twitch muscles and fibers. So you're gonna tear a few things. Uh so he could do a lot of different things in this offense uh that we seen. And I I seen the video you showed of him in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a lot, that's a couple of years ago. It's a few years ago, right? Well, my, my point in that is I got killed from some people saying, oh, you're bringing up stuff from like six years ago. My point in that was when he came to the NFL, especially in the first few years, and the kind of the reason why Baltimore got off of Greg Roman was kind of the lack of creativity within that offense, not allowing Lamar to kind of have a more of a passing attack. And he still had a thousand yards in that Greg Roman offense. And yeah. I think there's a lot of things he did in college 
in that Lincoln Riley kind of air raid esque type offense that he didn't really get to show showcase in the NFL so far. And then be it injuries, maybe, you know, uh, limited opportunities in some of the teams he was with. I think that if there is anybody who can kind of bring back out some of those things that he did so well in college, it would be Andy Reid. And that was, that was the only reason why I brought that uh, brought uh, use his college highlights <laughs> right now. Look, and, 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 and that's what I was talking about. Systems matter. They really do. Systems really do matter because, you know, teams are utilized guys differently. And so we don't bring, you know, Lincoln Riley, the things he runs and how you get guys open. Um, you know, Andy is, is as creative as, as anybody. We know they're most probably most creative coach out here, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, we can we can utilize that. Uh, and so that that's that's the questions with him. All right. Uh, is the durability. I love that he's following Patrick Mahomes. Uh, we don't know what that means. We don't know what he's asking for as far as. You know, for for price tag wise, what he's looking to get signed for. That's another thing. OK, so maybe that's the reason it hasn't been signed. But those are the pros and cons, at least for him, for Marquise Brown. Yep. Okay. Now I'm gonna get into my my guy Curtis Samuel. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now this this is what I this is what I'm saying uh, about Curtis, and I've watched him over the years. He's a very talented guy. Uh, he has muscle and size to him on his frame. He could he. He can do, he can do it all. He can do it all. You can put him in the backfield. You can put him on the outside the slot. You 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 name it. Jet sweep reverses. He can do it all. Okay. Curtis Samuel, like they say, Swiss Army Knight. He is that guy. He is when I'm talking about perfectly geared for this type of offense. He is the perfect fit for what we do. When you need a guy, so you don't have to have Sky Moore run those those routes, do all those things. Curtis Samuel could do it, and he could catch the football. He's got good catch radius. He's very athletic. He runs over guys. He's a big. He's a big guy, solid guy, like put together. Uh, and I and I and I said this during the evaluation of Curtis Samuel. I've always liked him. I always like Curtis Samuel. He got lost in that shuffle, man. When you have Dotson and you have, uh, uh. Shoot, McLaurin. Uh, McLaurin on the outside. When, when you have the three-headed monster, that's a tough one. That's tough to get because some guys will eat up some of the catches. They eat up some of the time of the catches. Okay. Uh, I was the one saying this last year when it was time of trade deadline. Yep. And I said Curtis Sanders is the guy we need to go get. Why? One, he's been in the system that he was with EB that taught him exactly what he needed to do. Okay. And he did stay healthy. Yes, he did, Junior. He stayed healthy this year, okay? A couple years ago, I think he's starting to take care of his body, starting to see a little bit, he's starting to grow somewhat, and it may take some time. Uh, but I look respectively, he has 62, 64 catches. And this is what I'm thinking of. If you have a guy like that is taking some of those routes away from Rasheed Rice, now you can have Rasheed Rice open up the way you want it to, okay? Now you can have Rasheed Rice throwing deep balls to Rasheed Rice, Okay? You could, you could, I'm telling you, Rasheed Rice is your number one. You could have him as your number two. Curtis Samuel's doing all those other things, okay? Tight uh, the wide receiver screens, we've seen that. We've seen how it was getting up the field. He's got explosion. he got speed, okay? And he's a bigger guy than, than Brown is, all right? So we're just going to be honest. I'm going I'm to talk this. So if I'm sitting up and watching this, I'm like, yo, this dude right here makes a lot of sense to me, a lot of sense. This was last year I was saying this, right, Marcus? Yeah. You know and so he's going to get you 60, 70 catches every year, 60, 62, 64. And then you had McLaurin, you had Dotson, and Sam Howell throwing you the football? Come on, man. <laughs> Which, um, you know, he did a good job. I think he did a good job this past year. Uh, but I think he'll he'll speak the terminology. He'll have everything down when he comes to training camp. He's a plug-and-play guy you can put in right now. Hey, man, this is what we're running. Cool, we got it. Mooney's had the picture, right? Mooney could have been that fit because he had Nagy. But now, EB, without a doubt, is sitting there saying, you know what? This guy right here can do the job. He can do it. If you in that in, in that commander's offense and they'll caught 62, 64 balls a year, you can, you can have that. And I'm telling you, you can open up that deal with Rasheed Rice. 
throw the deep ball with this guy. Okay, back shoulder throws. You could you could let him go, and let him be what he was in college. You put it that way. Okay, you don't have to be the gadget guy. You know, he got a lot of balls like the the wide receiver screens. That could be the Samuel, but for them them two guys or three who you want to retain and then get a guy in the draft too. Come on. I'm telling you, it's just, it, I think it opens up an offense the way that we want to. It, it doesn't change anything that we do. Not at all. He runs everything that we, we ask him to run. So uh, that's why I like Samuel. I like him a lot. Okay. Yeah. He had a little history in, in, in the back end of hurting his, his, I think he had an ankle that he had to have surgery on. Of course, he had like the hamstring and stuff like that, but uh, I do like it. Now, that that's the the con. The con is, yeah, injury history, okay? But he hadn't been hurt in the last couple of years. He hadn't been hurt in the last few years. So he's a guy that's a go-getter. Uh, I like his attitude. He loves playing football. I think whatever system he's going to be in, he's going to strive. He's just going to be a consistent guy that's going to get you 60-something catches a year. Why wouldn't you want to take that, right? A solid guy that can do all the things you want him to do. Jet sweeps, reverses, all those different things. Put him in the backfield. He can even take off some from Pacheco if you needed him to. He is a Swiss all night. That's true. That is true. Yeah. So that's what I, I like about him. That's what I like uh, Samuel, right? So. Uh, well, in 2021, this is, this is interesting, just a, a, a contractual question. Um, yeah. Just because it's seeming like at this point, if we do sign a guy or two, hope maybe two, uh, but it seems like it's gonna be like a one-year prove-it deal to anybody we, we sign, just because, and that's the way it's gonna be unless we draft a uh, uh, receiver. It seems like when we do get a vet, it's probably gonna be a one-year deal-ish. If back in 2021, when he went from Carolina to uh, Washington, he signed a three-year, thirty-four and a half million dollar deal. Gave some money. Now, at that point, obviously it didn't work out. I mean, he had, he had a groin injury. Uh, was on the pup with. Um, with Washington in his first year, and, you know, I mean, just overall, like, I guess he didn't, I maybe didn't live up to the expectations of what they thought he was going to be. And, you know, they had a new system, a new regime anyway, in his last year there, but like, where does that go as far as he signed a three year, $34.5 million deal? Where does that go from this, like with it, with this offer here? No, I, I, th- I think they just, they had a lot of, they had a mouse to feed around there. True. They had a lot of mouse to feed. I mean, you got, you got McLaurin and, and, and Dotson. That's a lot of maps. And he yeah. just got an insight in who's who uh oh, Zach Ertz just went there. Yeah. So they might try Thomas. to yeah, they might try to uh uh go somewhere different uh with, with another wide receiver. My thing is this, and and, and Junior said it, he Debo is he's the closest thing to Debo that, that is in the league than Debo. Yeah, he is that guy. He is he is Debo ish. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. So I'm glad you said that because I was saying the same thing, like, yeah, he could definitely be. That 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 guy like Debo is he really can, so uh, that's what I like about him. So it's always this it, speculation of his injury history is what's going to get you right. Yeah. Uh, so then we go to Josh Reynolds. Now, Josh Reynolds for me, very different than the other two. <laughs> very different. Very different <laughs> guys. Uh, I think he's a he, he's uh, I think he's. He's a good receiver. Uh, I don't know how much he's going to move the needle with offensively. Brown and Samuels are better than Reynolds. They are. Reynolds had flashes that he's like, oh, my God, this guy's going to be great. And then all of a sudden he disappears and it's like, well, where's this dude at? What happened mm-hmm. to Reynolds? So that, that's the thing with me. Uh, he's not as polished as these guys. Samuel and Brown run better routes. Uh, I think I think uh, Brown he learned some things up there. Josh Reynolds learned some things up there with uh, the Mon Saint Brown. Probably, you know, he probably was like, "Hey, man, this dude right here is the truth." Let me learn some things with him. Uh, but I think he is he's definitely uh, a different receiver. Definitely a different receiver. My thing is, we're trying to upgrade. Is he going to be upgraded to the to what we have? That's the question. Does it give you uh, the ability to let a guy like Rasheed Rice go and just thrive? That's what I'm saying. 
So if you're looking for a guy to have, you know, come in and, and add on to what you're doing, I don't know Josh Reynolds does that for us. Okay. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to be honest. He, I'm not just going to call him a guy because he's just not no guy, but I think he's a young guy that could come in and, and get catches, but he's not going to move the needle for us. I just, I just don't think so. Not like the other two can, can do for us at all. And in agreement with you here, I think Josh Reynolds is not going to demand that much money. And I yeah. think, and this is, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but I think Reynolds in with the sat and what he's going to be asking for, I think you could either get a Hollywood Brown or Curtis Samuel and him. You get one of those two other guys and him, really. I think, I mean, because at this, cause I, I don't think it would be one or the other. I think it would be like Hollywood or Samuel, and one of those two. I don't think we're going to get either one of both of them, but I think you get Hollywood or Samuel. And you get Josh Reynolds, really. I, I think you could you could get him in, in that because, yeah, what he brings is totally different from them. And you also look at the age aspect. Hollywood's 26, Curtis Samuel's 27, and then Josh Reynolds 29 going on 30. So it's like that's, you know, when you get that 30 part, it's, you know, getting up yeah. there. Yeah, it's getting up there. It's getting up there. But, yeah, I, I, that, that 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 is a possibility. I wouldn't be mad with that either. I wouldn't be mad with that. Oh, I would you love that. Those guys in those, yeah. Instantly better than last year's receiver room, top to bottom, to, to start out the season. Right, right. Then it, it, just me personally, not like that's why I gave you my pros and cons for each of those guys. Uh, but I don't think Reynolds by himself is going to be the one to move the needle. I, I just, nope. you know, you, you if you're going to do that, just like we're sitting there talking about, um, you know, they're talking about Williams and Renfro. Okay. And we're talking about two legit guys out here. And we don't know what they're going to be asking for. I don't know what they're going to be looking for. Uh, Williams wants some peace to to take it all in. And then you look at the injury bug with him. Is he going to be all right? I think that's the yeah. question. Uh, so that's the only thing you have to worry about. Uh, uh, Renfro, between those two, who would you rather have uh, between Mike Williams and Renfro? Man, different healthy, guys. man, yeah, different guys. A healthy Mike Williams is a dude that, you, hey, that's a – that sucker play. He could play some ball. He got better when I watched him from when he started to where he is now. He's a different animal, different animal. Dagon, he got a he, he ended up getting hurt. DJ Shark, I mean, the Shark might be cheapest too. That's a, yeah. it's a Reynolds. That's a Reynolds type of guy. This guy, you know, he, I'm just, I think he's good. He's a good guy. He, you know, he's a good receiver. I don't think he's gonna move the needle. I think if Curtis said, I keep going back to him. I think Curtis Samuels or Hollywood Brown come here. Uh, they're going to have 60, 70 ball season. Definitely. No doubt about it. That's what you want. That's what you're looking for. Okay. That is that, that is that, that is definitely what you're looking for. So we'll see. I don't, I don't know how this thing's going to play out. Uh, what about OBJ? <laughs> no one brought his name up. I know. Him too? I might be wishful thinking on, on people's parts to not bring his name up. I know it, but that joke, man. <laughs> he, you know, he's gonna be asked for some money. I know. I know. Yeah. But also, too, we talk we talk about team or teams holding off to see who's gonna be released and stuff. Also, on the other end, too, everyone knew that Cal Ridley was one of the hottest receivers going into this free agency. Do you think a lot of receivers maybe hold, were holding off to see what Calvin really got just to make that be hey, like look. He got this. I want this, like kind of thing. Uh, I tell him, uh, you are uh, not no Calvin Ridley. <laughs> uh, but we, we can get we can get you signed with what we want to give you. But uh, you you not Calvin Ridley, okay? So, Sammy said OBJ can kick rocks, and then Demonte Green said no. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that last year. I'm like, nah, man. I, I, no, nah. I'm like, yeah, OBJ. I don't think he'd be a good fit here. I yeah. like him. He's a talented guy, man. But I no. No, no, no. Yeah. And the thing about everyone's talking about Mike if Mike Williams, if he can only stay healthy. When you mentioned he if he if he can stay healthy, that's what Chargers fans were saying for the last uh six, since they drafted him. It's like if only he could stay healthy, he'd be a oh, top five receiver. But that sucker is healthy. That sucker is a problem. Yeah. He's an absolute problem. So uh but that that's that's my pros and cons for the guys. That, that we were speaking about wide receiver wise. Uh, and so my mine would be, this is my preference, my opinion, Samuels, Brown, and then Reynolds, and 
you know, I don't know as far as if, if, if they're looking for Renfro and, and we get Fren- Renfro here. I said, I, I brought that name up last year too. I'm mm-hmm. like, hey man, let's get, can we get him out of the deal? They, McDaniels didn't like him out there in Vegas. They got two monsters on the outside. So he got lost in that shuffle. Renfro can ball. Okay. He can absolutely ball. He'd be great in this system. And this will be a, a absolute slap in the face if he comes here in the same division playing against them. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they probably weren't going to trade him to us, but yeah, you, you can, uh, now that he's a free agent, he can go wherever he wants. I'm seeing online Tyreek Hill's trying to recruit either him or Michael Thomas to Miami. I, I don't I don't know why they would need another receiver. That there's that they've lost a lot of guys this offseason. So I don't know why he's trying to recruit more receivers to uh, Miami. They already have enough uh, over there as far as offensively. They need to recruit some uh, other positions. But yeah. Donna Cochran says, I love OBJ. He wants another ring. Yeah, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. And ain't nothing wrong with his talent at all. I think you know he's a talented guy, talent receiver. It's always a question about him remaining healthy. Yes. That's the thing. That, that I think that's the thing with, with a lot of these guys at this point in time. Unless you're the first crop receivers that went fast. Now you're playing the game of man, like this is why you have one year proof of deals to say, like, hey, like, we're gonna give you this. You just need to prove you need to stay healthy. Is that kind of kind of a thing? Kind of kind of what Juju did when he came from Pittsburgh to, to Kansas City. It was, hey, like, play out this year, see if you can stay healthy, and then you can go get your bag the following year. That, that that's kind of what I'm sure Veach is talking to these guys about. Like, hey, like, one year up to eight million dollars. If you can if you can play your ass off and like stay healthy, then you can be, we may offer you a, a big time contract, or you'll earn some place else for next year. But uh, you'll definitely compete for a ring this year for sure. Stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kathy Welch, no offense, who Reynolds play for. He plays with Detroit Lions. Yeah, and yeah. With the, he's been with the Rams. He's been he's been with a few teams. He, he, he followed golf around. So he was, he was with the Rams. Then went to he, he, yeah. when he, they they dropped him from Tennessee. He, he went to uh, Detroit. And ironically, that someone brought up DJ Chark earlier. I'm pretty sure Chark and Reynolds were like rotating in the same reps because in Detroit together with each other. So like they're like same kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens in the next few days. Um, that there's this one account uh, online who a lot of people think he's like a some like person who's tied to an agency or something. What's like names like something at Ricky something. I'm sure everyone who's in the chat knows this guy's called like a lot of things so far. This free agency, he's like some anonymous account. He's like ten thousand followers in the last day because he's called like he called the Cal Rivley to um, Tennessee deal. He called a few other things. Everyone's like, whoa, what was his account? He deleted his account for like, earlier a little bit while ago. And they uh, reopened up again, and he still maintains that Hollywood Brown will be coming to Kansas City. So that's what he said. He said it's knee trade has to happen first, and then Hollywood Brown will come. So we'll see what happens with that. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.